Hi, I'm Marcus Hutzel, and in my previous video, I talked about how to create an audio submix track in Adobe Premiere Pro and how to route other audio tracks to it and some basic uses of it. So if you need to know how to create and assign audio to a submix track, check out that video. I'll link it below as well. But in this video, I'm going to talk about a few reasons why you might actually want or need to use submix tracks with some examples. So real quick for starters, the reason I like to use Adobe Premiere Pro over a lot of the other video editors is the way it handles audio and the audio advantages it has over those other programs. So the way I mix and edit my audio, I just don't add effects directly to the individual audio clips in my timeline. For most of my videos, the primary audio track is usually my voice recorded with a single microphone. But when a lot of other people edit their videos, a lot of people will add their EQ and effects directly to that audio clip in the timeline by dragging an effect from the effects bin over to their clip. I don't do that, hardly ever. I add effects to the entire track using the audio track mixer in Premiere Pro. This way the entire track is affected. So any audio I put in, say track one, gets affected by the EQ, compressor, or any other effects that I add to the track. This is just the way I believe audio is supposed to be mixed. Sometimes I'll add an EQ to a small sound effect in the timeline if I only use it once, but for audio that spans the entirety of my project, like music and vocals, I use the track mixer in Premiere instead of dropping effects onto the individual audio clips. So I just wanted you to understand how I mix and why I mix my audio this way and why I like Premiere over the other video editors because it has a legitimate audio mixer right inside. Anyway, so with that out of the way, why would you need or want to use an audio submix track in Adobe Premiere or any other program really? Well, of course, there are a few reasons. Number one, the most basic reason is that you need to adjust the level of multiple tracks at the same time with a single fader or with a single automation curve in your timeline. Number two, you need to add effects to multiple tracks as a group like equalization or compression so it affects all of the tracks that are assigned to that submix track instead of having to add the same effect to every single track. And that can save processing power on your computer as well. And number three, specifically for Adobe Premiere, you have the need to add more than five audio effects plugins to an audio track. More on this in just a bit. So let's talk about the first two reasons for using a submix track because they kind of go together and that's grouping for volume and grouping for effects plugins because I often do both of these at the same time. As I mentioned in my previous video, one of the best ways to think about why you might want to use a submix track is that you need to group particular tracks together and control that group's overall volume or maybe overall equalization or compression as a whole or as a group. For example, maybe you have multiple vocal tracks from different actors' voices that you recorded on set, each of their voices using a different microphone and into its individual audio track. And maybe you want to group those actors' voices together, or maybe you want to group sound effects together, or maybe you want to group your music tracks together. Then by grouping these three types of sounds, vocals, sound effects, and music, you can then adjust the balance between all three of these types of sounds with fewer audio faders or fewer automation curves in your timeline. So if I have maybe three vocal tracks, two sound effects tracks, and maybe four or five music tracks, well, if I needed to balance the music only, without submix tracks, I'd have to go and grab those five individual faders for those music tracks and bring them all down at the same time or write five different automation curves in my timeline. But if I use a submix track, I can adjust the overall volume of the music tracks as a group with a single fader or again, a single automation curve. And I can still adjust the individual levels of each individual audio track that goes to that submix track if needed. And this is kind of like using audio rules in Final Cut Pro, but I think Final Cut Pro's audio rules and audio mixing is just really, really not good. So I just don't use Final Cut Pro mainly for its lack of audio abilities. I come from an audio background and having a full audio mixer in my opinion is necessary on large projects. And that's, again, the main reason I kind of stay away from Final Cut Pro and lean a lot more towards Premiere and a little bit towards DaVinci Resolve. But I digress, we're talking about Premiere Pro. And here's a quick example. I couldn't get anyone to record some audio and I needed to get this video done, so I just used some public domain footage and audio that I found, and we're going to use that as an example of how I might group together vocal tracks. So here we have, in my timeline, you can see I've got four audio tracks. One, two, three and four, and that's for the four different actors in this scene. We've got, we'll call him Richard, we'll call them uh, Sally, we'll call the uh, gentleman you see on screen there, 
Farnsworth, and we'll call the last woman, I don't know, Susie. So you can see here, I've got Richard's audio on the first track. I've got, I believe I call her Sally's audio in the second track. Farnsworth is in the third track and Susie is in the fourth track. All right, so the tracks are separated. Now I need to add a submix track if I want to submix them. So I'll scroll down to the bottom here, my timeline. I'll right click in some blank space here on my audio five track and I can select add audio submix track. So we'll add that. And then the submix track is added down here at the bottom. And we can see that right there. But again, as in my previous video, I usually don't look at it this way. I look at it in the audio track mixer. So let's open that up. We'll go up to window. We'll go to audio track mixer and we'll select the audio track mixer for this particular sequence. This sequence is called DT underscore SEQ2. So we'll select that one. And then my audio mixer pops up over here on the left side of my Premiere window. And then I will hover my mouse over it, hit tilde to make it full screen. And then we can see our mixer full screen. So you can see here, I've got uh, the gentleman called, we'll call him DT. Well, actually, let's, we call him Richard. And we've got Sally, we'll name her. We've got Farnsworth and we've got Susie. So there's my four vocal tracks. And here is my new submix track at the end. We'll rename this vocals. And now we will assign all of our vocal tracks to the new vocal submix track by dropping down the output tab here, assign Richard T to vocals, assign Sally to vocals, assign Farnsworth to vocals, and assign Susie to vocals. So now all of those audio tracks get routed through the submix track first. And let's say during my mix, if I'm just listening to the tracks by themselves, let's say that my faders need to live somewhere in, in this realm. So I've got Richard at zero, I've got Sally around, around negative, negative three or negative four, I've got Farnsworth at zero, and I've got Susie at uh, plus four. So let's say that that's where the faders need to live for this mix. And let's play that and see how it sounds. Might be a tip off. Don't you think you could disguise it? Mm, I don't think so. That sort of puts me in a spot. I don't wish to stir the green. Well, it actually sounds like Farnsworth needs to be raised up a bit, so we'll raise him up. Denied monster of devouring jealousy. But don't you think it sounds suspiciously quiet in there? Oh, you... All right, so, uh, again, let's say my mix is here, and I've just decided this is where my faders need to live for the overall audio level between the different actors' voices. And then let's say further on down the mix, I need all those voices to come up together as a group. I don't need to change their individual levels against each other, but I need to raise or lower them as a group. Well, now with the submix track, I can do that. So if I hit play again. Hello, you two. Have you been waiting long? Quite. May we go I can in actually now? just. By all means. Thank you. Bring their vocals up. I can up. see the police work, my. Again, as a group. Be very interesting. And I can bring their vocals down as a group. And if I really needed to, I can actually automate that change. I can go down here to the vocals submix track which is right here on my screen, and I can write in an automation curve. Let's say I need them to drop down at this point in the timeline, make that a little bigger so I can see that. And let's say I just want the vocals to fade out completely because I'm changing scenes or something. So if I hit play. Oh, you. Hello, you two. Have you been waiting long? Quite. May we go in now? By all means. So there we can see that over that little time span where I wrote that one automation curve in the submix track that all my vocals went down at the same time. They were still in the same relative level to each other, but I was able to automate them as a group. But I also use it to group together effects. Let's say for some reason I needed all of those tracks to have a particular effect, like I wanted to compress them all as a group. No problem, since I have them routed to my submix track, if we go to back to my track mixer, make that large again, here on the vocal submix track, S1, vocal submix, we can drop in, let's say, dynamics processing, and we can make that a compressor. We can bring that down. Let's uh, open this back up, see our timeline. We'll hit play. I doubt it. This Brooklyn accent and let's off. adjust our compressor to where we're compressing so. everything a little That's bit. Sort of Here we go. We're getting a little bit of compression there, and then I can go out here and give it a little output gain in my compressor to bring the overall level up. And now I've added a single compressor to compress all the vocals at the same time. And I use that a lot of the time as well. Sometimes you'll need to set an EQ or a compressor to affect a group of tracks. And then again, great way to do it with submix tracks. So one more example of how I usually use submix tracks is actually for music. So if you use a service like Epidemic Sound for your music beds, which I use, 
you can download either the full stereo mix and not be able to do anything with the song other than put it in there and play it. Or you can download the individual stems or the individual parts of that song. A lot of the time they'll split it up into a bass track, a drum track, a rhythm section track, and maybe a melody track. So I've actually done that here. Let's take this supersonic Megaloman, which I got from Epidemic Sound. We'll drop it in our timeline and let's hit play. I like it, but I don't like that, that can me so maybe I want to take that out. Well, since this track right here is the actual fully mixed stereo track, I can't take that out. So let's delete that. And you can see over here that I've downloaded the individual stems. So let's drag those in one at a time over in our timeline. There's the, the bass, there's the drums, there's the kind of rhythm instruments, and here's that melody. So if we hit play, we're gonna hear the same thing because those tracks, obviously you have to line them up at the beginning of your timeline, but those are the individual tracks. So I'm gonna go back up to my mixer and just make that full screen. So now I'm gonna rename this bass, drums, call it rhythm, melody. And if I hit play, since I downloaded the individual stems, I can actually take that melody down uh, if I wanted to. But that's not the end of the story because we haven't done anything with the submix track. So let's add another submix track. Right click down here, add audio submix track. Now we get a new submix track. We will call it music sub. Now let's assign our music tracks to that. So we'll drop this down. We'll go music sub, music sub, music sub, music sub. So now all of our music tracks are assigned to that music subtrack, and I can hit play. Again, I can turn the music down with a single fader. Um, but again, like that melody, maybe I don't want that. So let's bring that down in the mix and hit play again. Here I can bring that melody up and down, but I can also then control the overall music using my submix track fader. So I'll do that a lot of the time. I'll often download the stems of a song so I can either take a part out completely, but in this scenario, it's great to use a submix track because again, you may need to take the overall music down when you're talking and have the music come back up. And if you download the stems, then you either have to write that many automations when you want to duck the music, or if you put them in a submix track, then you can just write one automation. And let's do that real quick. Let's go back to our timeline. So let's say right here in the video, this is my vocal track where I'm about to start speaking. And right here is where I want to take the level of the music down. Let's actually make all of our tracks slightly larger. And so we've got the blue track is my vocal, green are all the music tracks, and here is my music submix track. So if we wanted the music to dip down right here, I could either go in here individually and drop the drums down, drop the bass down, drop the rhythm section down, and drop the melody down. So I've had to write four automation tracks just to dip the level of music before I start speaking. That's inefficient, takes a long time. You'll never get through your edit. So let's undo all of that. And since we've now grouped all of these things to a submix track, all I have to do is come down to my music sub automation track, put two points right there, drop the music submix track down. So if I hit play. Hi, Marcus Hutzel here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you real quick how to add an audio submix track in Adobe Premiere Pro. Premiere? Premiere. Adobe Premiere. And then at the end here, we can make the music come back up, even though I flubbed my line. So if we go back and play this, Premier. Adobe Premiere. So again, this way I can have all the music stems and mix them, maybe the drums a little louder, maybe that melody track a little lower, but then still write an automation curve on one submix track to have the music come up and down during my video without having to write multiple automation tracks. And reason number three for me to use submix tracks in Adobe Premiere is that it allows me to get more than five effects plugins for a single audio track. So Premiere only gives you five plugin slots for any individual audio track channel. 
but sometimes I need more than five plugins for a particular audio track. How do we solve this? Well, if this first track is my vocal and I need to maybe put more than five plugins on this track, and yes, that comes up a lot. So here we can see that I have added the maximum of five plugins to this audio track. Well, what if I think I need to do just one more thing to this audio track, like maybe a de-esser? Well, you can see here that I have a noise reduction plugin, a dynamics plugin where I use an expander, I have a parametric equalizer, then a dynamics processing plugin, which is where I use a compressor, and then a hard limiter just in case. Well, then I'm out of slots, but maybe I hear that I need a de-esser for those sibilant sounds. So I have this main vocal track routed over to another submix track called Vox Submix, where I then have a de-esser, another compressor, and another hard limiter at the end still leaving me two open slots. And sometimes I'll use a light D-reverb plugin as well, just depends. So my main vocal audio is now being processed with eight audio effects plugins. It gets the adjustments of all five of the inserts on the main track, then because it's routed over to my Vox submix track, it then gets processed by these additional three audio inserts. So again, I now get eight total plugins for this example. And I can keep adding if I want to. I can get a total of two more in this submix track for a total of 10 audio insert plugins if I need them. And none of this is anything new to audio mixing, but the fact that these tools are available in a video editor is, for me, an almost absolute must. And these are a few of the main reasons I still use Adobe Premiere, because I come from an audio background and my brain is ingrained and a bit programmed with how to mix audio, in my opinion, properly with a proper audio mixer audio plugins, and audio routing tools and abilities. And this is one of the reasons I'm still not and probably never will be a Final Cut Pro video editor. It's because of the power of the audio tools available right here within Adobe Premiere. And I use Submix tracks for a lot of video editing sessions. They're powerful and for me, very, very useful and keep me and others editing audio just a little bit better than the rest. So that's it, a few more examples of how and why you may want to use Submix tracks in your Adobe Premiere video editing projects. If you found this video helpful, do consider subscribing and giving this video the old thumbs up. It truly helps and helps me grow and be in a better position to help teach you what I know. And hopefully that helps. All right, later.